so what we have done so far as far as detonation is concerned is to come up with a uh, way by which we can get the detonation wave velocity for which we realize that we do not necessarily have to get into the wave structure unlike what we did for the deflagrations. But in any case uh, it is also important for us to actually think a little bit about the detonation wave structure if you want to uh, get into applications with detonation waves as we pointed out for example uh, in pulse detonation engines which is coming up as a good uh, 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 alternative to um, engines that are commonly used now. So we, we, we today we will just look at detonation wave structure. Now in reality a detonation wave is highly three dimensional uh, the, the, the structure is very very complicated but just for the sake of simplicity we could still adopt a one dimensional approach by which we now try to see what happens within the detonation wave just like how we did uh, for the deflagration wave where we said we look at a plain, planar deflagration and you have upstream heat conduction and uh, reaction rates towards the later the downstream part of the flame thickness and so on. Similarly we can have a similar approach um, and, and the, the, the first kind of uh, um, uh, advancement that was done in this is uh, what is typically called as the ZND model which stands for uh, Zeldovich as usual as with most things in combustion it also it always has to have Zeldovich there. So uh, this, this actually stands for uh, Zeldovich. Neumann and uh, During who independently all three of them independently evolved this idea uh, in the uh, time frame of about 1940 to 1942 that is that, around the time frame um, of course there is a uh, historic, historical perspective about this detonations are uh, something that is that is somewhat destructive most of the time and this time frame that we are talking about was also the time of the second world war. So uh, there was good reason to expect why people should be working on this at that time. So uh, the, the basic idea of the Z and D model is uh, one of shock uh, followed by chemical reaction. That is to say a detonation wave is nothing but starting with the shock followed by uh, chemical reaction. So keep in mind detonation waves propagate at supersonic speeds so do normal shocks. So we are talking about a normal shock propagation and the, the, and the job of the normal shock is uh, as far as the detonation wave is concerned with, uh, with respect to this model is to increase the temperature downstream of the shock to a high enough level that will now get the reactions going at as fast rates as is required for the reaction zone to follow the, uh, uh, the, the shock right. So previously in the case of deflagrations if you now let the reaction rates happen by themselves then the propagation rate is limited by how fast the heat release in from the chemical reactions can get conducted upstream to the uh, reactants. Whereas here we do not have that problem uh, in fact that the problem here is can we have the chemical reactions happen fast enough to be able for the for that layer of chemical reactions to closely follow the shock. So effectively then the entire detonation wave is all about the shock rising the temperature of the um, of the downstream gas still reactants as a, as a matter of fact because you do not expect too much reaction to happen within the shock because a normal shock is only a few mean free paths thick that kind of thickness is not sufficient for significant amount of collisions to happen between the reactants for appreciable reactions to happen therefore uh, uh, you are essentially rising the temperature of the um, reactants to a high enough level such that the reaction rates uh, are, are appreciable and then this reaction layer will faithfully follow the shock this is essentially the, uh, uh, the approximation we will see. Uh, how this approximation can be relaxed as we discussed this a little bit further but 
within the framework of the ZND model the essential approximation is the first thing that you have is a shock and then uh, you have chemical reactions. So the normal shock in the reactant uh, mixture rises the temperature to such level as to cause significant reaction rates for reaction zone to follow the shock. So in fact what typically happens is so if you now think about how, how to look at what happens within a, a detonation wave um, let us say let us suppose now you consider the thickness of a detonation wave the first thing that we that we are looking at is like like a shock that happens right here which is very very thin and then so if you now look at how the temperature varies uh, so you now start with a T naught and then across the shock the temperature actually increases to, to, to a, a jumps to a value but that is not the end of the story right because in reality now if you have chemical reactions you have to reach something like the flame temperature and the shock itself is not going to rise the temperature up to the flame temperature it is going to rise it up to some point and then subsequently you now have a, a region where the temperature remains constant for, 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 for some distance and then it begins to increase very similar to the way it increases uh, in, the, in the deflagration uh, wave pattern and then, uh, and then levels off. So this is for example your T infinity there uh, starting from T naught and this temperature that, 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 that the this value that the temperature rises to uh, just downstream of the shock is uh, sufficiently high enough for chemical reactions to happen in this in this region. Um, so of course uh, in this picture we can try to alter so in this picture we now have a region that is that is where the temperature levels off just after the shock which we will now call the induction zone and uh, this is the reaction zone. So the induction zone is where you have a the, 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 the reactants are now elevated to a temperature and then go through a induction period keep in mind this is not a very uh, uh, very long period because the entire flow is happening very fast right. So you have a short induction period when the reactants begin to sense the temperature and then cause reactions that will cause additional further increase in temperature. So this is the this is the time when the reaction rates are just barely beginning to build up because you have the exponential dependence on temperature right and then it shoots up. So you have this induction zone uh, where, where uh, you have nearly more or less a constant temperature and then you have this sudden rise. This rise unlike in deflagrations is having a significant convective effect along in the case of deflagrations we had a preheat zone which was primarily uh, containing a conductive diffusive balance with no reactive component and then the reaction zone where you had a reactive diffusive balance with hardly a convective um, effect but here you have significant convection happening in this reaction zone as well because you, 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 you have very high very fast flow rates there. So if you now have if you now think about this kind of a situation for the, the, the temperature correspondingly if you now look at the pressure right. So if you, if you think about the pressure and then let us suppose that you start with the same same line for P naught as well um, the P naught uh, of course we are, we are normalizing things right. So the P naught actually goes up to a significantly high value and then think about what happens when you have chemical reactions you have a pressure that decreases right. So you, you, you actually go through a, 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 a decrease in, in the pressure through the, 
through, through, through the reactions. So you, you reach a pressure that is higher than what you actually see outside of the detonation wave. So you think that the, you think that you got a very high pressure uh, be behind the detonation wave and this is the jump that you are beginning to talk about all right but in reality you went through a fairly further increase in pressure we will begin to talk about that pretty soon okay that is because in the shock you have a pressure rise and then you have a chemical reaction similar to the deflagration where you have a pressure de decrease all right now you can we can you can, you can say okay this rise is a lot more when compared to this decrease all that stuff is correct so again you can, you can quantify this uh, to, to find out that you do not have a big difference between these two in any case you have a pressure rise and uh, followed by a decay that is that is the important thing that you have to think about. Similarly can we now think about the velocity right so across a normal shock the velocity decreases right and then we are talking about a Schapp and Juge detonation wave for most part um, uh, in any case all the in all these detonations uh, we, we, we found that the, the reactants follow the wave sorry the, the products follow the wave at a velocity that is uh, or at a Mach number that is lower than the incoming Mach number right. Uh, so you, you have to end up with a lower velocity than you start out with that means you start with a high velocity that is your U0 and then this decreases significantly across the uh, across the shock and what happens when you have when you have a flow going through a deflagration situation where you have a temperature rise uh, then, then, the, then the density falls and therefore the velocity increases right. So you now have a velocity increase that that happens over here so you get a U infinity. So the velocity drop that you sense across the, de the detonation wave in a Rankine Hugonio uh, framework is actually this but in reality if you go into the wave you find that the velocity drop is even further down uh, before it actually restores to a, a level that is higher than here but lower than there. So these are the kinds of things that are uh, going on similar but then of course if you now think about um, uh, um, reactant concentration right so if you now look at the reactant concentration you started out with a high reactant level so let us say YR but no change across the shock right so the reactant concentrations are pretty much remaining the same and begin to decay only uh, maybe 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 you can you can look at the deficient reactant go all the way down to 0 uh, over here or, or fairly low value so you say uh, you can say why are not and then why are infinity right. So this variation happens only in the reaction zone it does not happen before that so you begin to understand these, these, these kinds of things. So can we now think about how the state of the gases uh, move through the uh, reaction uh, so the detonation wave thickness um, within a Rankine Hugonio framework right. So if I want to now do that I let, let me just then plot my Hugonio plot where you have P infinity and then 1 over rho infinity is what is classically plotted but I am going to actually track um, the state of the system before it reaches P infinity that means my P infinity my, my, uh, as, my, as I go along X whatever is my P I am going to try to track so from the origin um, which is your P naught uh, 1 over rho naught right and the Hugonio curve is goes like that and what does the Z and D model say it says shock followed by chemical reactions this offset for the Hugonio curve is essentially coming from the fact that you have a heat release okay uh, the heat release is going to push the Hugonio more and more heat release in the, in the, in the wave is going to push the Hugonio to the top and to the right so when you are now looking at how a shock is going to be represented that is a adiabatic process that means you do not have any heat release across the shock itself right the heat release comes behind therefore uh, you have to follow the shock Hugonio. So the shock Hugonio is now going to be passing through the origin so 
So that's the shock here going here. And we are looking at the Chapanjuge uh, wave. So that's the uh, UCJ point. And that means you are looking at a, a, a tangent Rayleigh line. To the to the actual Hugonio with the with the full heat release, but then we are looking for how you are trying to locate your, your point between successive Rayleigh lines intersecting successive Hugonio curves for different Q. That means as we go along from here to there, you are having heat release happening, and then the velocity gradient also keeps changing. So what we want to do is. Uh, Look at a Rayleigh line with viscous effects. All right, so the viscous effects will now bring in the velocity gradient into it. So, uh, um, uh, integrating the momentum equation, equ momentum equation uh, in for in steady. 1D framework we have done this twice so far um, within so here what we are talking about is within the detonation wave um, we can now get P infinity minus p naught equals minus m dot squared 1 over rho infinity minus 1 over rho naught plus 4 by 3 mu du by dx. So of course you can now fix your x going this way right. When did we get this before? when we wanted to show that when you have very low Mach number this will actually be of the order of Knudsen number times Mach number and then uh, the uh, uh, convective term will actually be of the order of gamma times Mach number squared and so under very low, very low Mach number conditions for continuum flows with low Knudsen numbers you got a pressure equal to constant approximately that is when we, we, we try to integrate it once. The next time we integrated it was in the Rankine Hugonio framework, but that is like saying all the gradients are within the wave. That means we are looking at outside the wave to get jump conditions, so you do not you do not have the du du by dx term at all, right. So now we have a du by dx uh, term kept in in order to see how what happens when you now traverse through this wave, right. So if you do this, then what we find is you now have a decrease in u with increase in x so you start with negative du by dx and then you begin to have a and then you go to 0 0 du by dx and then you have a positive du by dx and then again you go back to 0 du by dx okay. so if you have a 0 du by dx then you get back to the Rayleigh line that you are familiar with all right and that's the Rayleigh line that we have plotted here So you start from here right that is for 0 du by dx you go through a 0 du by, du by dx again and you go through a 0 by 0 du by dx again. So you go through this 3 times once at the start once at the end and once somewhere in between all right that means our system should actually the, 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 um, yeah, the system should actually lie on the original Rayleigh line 3 times starting at this point ending at this point all right but also somewhere in between okay. So how do I represent this curve this is basically again a straight line with the same slope a minus m dot squared right but now having an intercept. So if I have negative uh, du by dx maybe I can use a different color chalk piece uh, I can now think about several Rayleigh lines that are parallel to this like this and these are with negative 
du by dx and if I want to go positive I have to draw lines that are like that and these are lines with positive du by dx. So the original Rayleigh line now begins to look like that corresponding to 0 du by dx right okay. So if you if you strictly follow the idea of having a shock followed by reaction uh, uh, reactions and the heat release is happening only in the reactions what it basically means is you rapidly go from the origin through a negative set of du by dx lines okay negative through a set of negative du by dx really lines along the shock Hugonio right as rapidly as you can go up to the peak pressure and I told you I will talk about this right. So you go up to the peak pressure all the way and then start turning around when you have when you now get this du by dx to flatten out to 0 back again right. So the positive du by dx begins to decrease back to 0 that means your, your path would now go along the shock Hugonio as much as possible you see the moment the shock Hugonio is deviating from the Rayleigh line like in tangent Rayleigh with a positive uh, with a negative du by dx your du by dx is now beginning to grow right back to 0 and then that means it, it, it now begins to go away from there and reaches your 0 du by dx and then you have to go through the positive z du by dx region right when the pressure begins to fall again therefore you now reach the situation where you got this peak and then you go through positive du by dx lines and then come back to this come back to the 0 du by dx Rayleigh line right. So this basically means that you are now going to have a, a peak that is called the von Neumann spike slower slower and slower the chemical reactions you have the delay in the chemical reactions so you have a shock that first happens to increase the pressure right then you get to follow more and more of this path if your chemical reactions are a bit faster if you can try to actually get the chemical reactions to be faster you could hope for other paths um, maybe use a couple of other color chalk pieces here uh, you could use other paths our destination is from here to there right so you could you could either go like this or like this but usually this one the, the blue line requires ultra fast reactions that means you are very much farther away from the shock Hugonio right you are beginning to think about reactions happening even within the initial layer itself as the increase in pressures are happening so you do not really go all the way to the one Neumann spike at all right whereas if you had modestly reacting uh, mixtures you could still go through a pressure that is higher than the Chapin Juge downstream pressure right and that that would lead to something like a von Neumann spike but the worst case von Neumann spike that you can get is when you when you are thinking about the ZND model where you are saying all you have is a shock to begin with and then you have chemical reactions following that all right. So this is this is a way by which you can compute the von Neumann spike and get the worst case pressure or, or worst case or best case depending upon what your goal is so if you want to have your detonation wave uh, inside a chamber and you want the chamber to withstand the pressure uh, this is the worst case pressure but if, but if you want to cause destruction by pressure um, by having a very high pressure region then this is the uh, best case uh, pressure for you.
right. So this, this is the extreme pressure that you can think about with the in the framework of the Z and D model. Um, I think we should stop saying anything more uh, within the one dimensional framework and I am not going to cover the three dimensional details because it is too complicated uh, for this course.